You couldn't get enough of me, could you? Seems odd. I'm not a hard habit to break. I could give you the phone number of several women who quit me cold turkey. <laughs> but a lot of people do struggle with addiction and often they're blamed for their own problem. It's a tricky balance between addiction and personal responsibility. We can't simply ban anything potentially addictive. After all, cell phones, sugar, prostitution will always be legal. And it's impossible to get rid of illegal drugs. <laughs> Wait, what? Prostitution... The US Drug Enforcement Agency has an efficiency rate of less than 1%. When it comes to stopping the flow of drugs into the US, a perfect example of this is crystal meth. The US government tried to stop its production by strictly regulating the sale of chemicals used to manufacture the drug. But the supply of meth still stayed the same. Mexican drug cartels immediately took over... No! No, not the cartels. It's important to buy local. <laughs> That's why I get all my crystal meth off Etsy. <laughs> and after the meth ate my original teeth, I was able to replace them using local artists. <laughs> what about drug dealers? Are they to blame for creating addicts? Some states have considered bills to charge dealers with murders in overdose cases. But that doesn't seem right. If a dealer can be guilty of murder, Aren't they also responsible for the good things that happen on drugs? <laughs> hey, whoever sold the Beatles LSD should be getting royalties for Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. <laughs> and whoever sold whippets to Hoover Stakes should be getting the death penalty. <laughs> and what about people who don't develop harmful addictions? Shouldn't we get some credit for being responsible drug users? Simply <laughs> taking a drug doesn't mean you'll be addicted. Some people are able to handle themselves just fine. In Vietnam, 20% of all American troops were using loads of heroin. Now, those soldiers who were using loads of heroin were followed home. It turns out they didn't go to rehab. They didn't go into withdrawal. 95% of them just stopped. I hate bad stand-up. <laughs> of course they got off heroin. All their connections were in Southeast Asia. Back home, it was harder to find. They didn't even have taco trucks in Cedar Rapids until the late 70s, so I'm guessing black tar heroin was a tough get. <laughs> we usually try to keep people from becoming addicted to drugs by imposing strict laws and harsh punishments, but the truth is, people do better when they're allowed to be responsible for themselves. Portugal became the first country in the world to decriminalise all drugs. Users aren't considered as criminals but rather treated as patients in a health-first approach. Those using heroin has fallen from about 100,000 to around 50,000 today. Way to go, Portugal. Or as I call you, the New Zealand of Spain. <laughs> There's always a risk involved in anything potentially addictive, and the person who chooses to indulge always bears some responsibility. But instead of casting blame, the right way to fight a drug crisis is by empowering people to help themselves by giving them access to affordable rehabilitation and social services that won't land them in jail. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get through it. That'll never happen in America. We need new ideas. If gamification is a way to make unfun things seem more fun, then maybe we need to ungamify drugs so they seem less fun. Make them harder and more annoying to do. This'll work. Fact. <laughs> For instance, you want ecstasy? No problem. You just have to get it from the DMV. <laughs> oh. Oh, you want to experience total bliss, do you? Sorry, that's Form 545B. This is the line for Form 545D. <laughs> also, we're closed. Come back tomorrow when we're fully booked. Or maybe you're addicted to sugar. You can still eat all the donuts you want, but like other drugs, they'll be cut with impure things you don't want, <laughs> like broccoli and glass. <laughs> but I'll tell you how we really end drug addiction. We get rid of the one thing they all have in common. Plastic. Plastic! Think about it! No more Ziploc baggies to sell drugs in. <laughs> One-inch baggies are only good for two things cocaine and packing a school lunch for a mouse. And if you're packing a mouse lunch, you're probably doing cocaine. <laughs> Plastic, I tells ya! No more straws for snorting or credit cards for cutting lines. They're all gone. You can't cut coke with apple pay. 
Plastic is the problem. Plastic syringes, big lighters, red solo cups. Now you students, we forced to clean that one mug you have. <laughs> and without condoms and balloons, there'll be no more smuggling. Try smuggling a coke rock up your ass wrapped in a bit of tin foil. <laughs> Not now. Wait until the Daily Show is on. I, I find my asshole relaxes and opens up whilst watching Trevor Noah. So no more plastic. It's good for you. It's good for the environment. This'll work. <laughs>